Thank you so much for your kindness. I appreciate you celebrating this wonderful occasion of retirement and rebirth and beginning new work. You see, it's wonderful things to say when you retire, you get to do the things that you're most happy and find greatest bliss in. And that's truly, I'm continuing on being in the bliss of serving as your pastor and serving here at City of Light in so many new and fresh ways. Thank you so much for making this special moment and this special day, uh, an honorable day and a day that uh, I'll remember. So grateful for our guests who've come this long, great distance to be with us. So grateful for each and every one of you and your kindness. Thank you so much. There are moments in life when everything changes. You've been there. Moments when it seems like the world stands still and you must make a decision. I'll never forget one spring morning in the fifth grade. I was presented with this moment that was so life transforming, so, uh, shall we say, a moment of great change uh, that I was required to make a decision. I was slipped a note by one of my classmates. I opened up the classmate and says, I like you. Do you like me? Yes or no? Circle the answer. <laughs> well, you may look at that and think about how silly because you probably encountered one of those notes as well. But it was a moment where all of a sudden I have to define this relationship. I have to make a decision. What is this relationship all about? You've all been there. Maybe you've been the one asking. Are we boyfriends? Are we girlfriends? Are we husband? Are we wife? What are, are we dating? Are we going steady? You all want to know what this relationship's all about. You may want to say also, are you a Republican or a Democrat? I want to know what this relationship's all about. You may say, I want to know, are you gay? Are you straight? Are you lesbian? Are you transgender? Are you cisgender? What is it? I want to know. We want to define the elements of this relationship. We want to know. We want this kind of clarity. Well, let me tell you this. In your spiritual life, in your day-to-day -day journey, it's important that you've discovered clarity about your relationship. Clarity and how you will react to uh, everyone and one another and all that is of God in your heart and your life. Finding that clarity is so important because it's the key element to our spiritual growth and development within our lives. Having this kind of clarity begins with this correct sense of I. Let's get this. The correct sense of I. That I that we look at, that we may call I, Paul Gretz, or I, uh, Carla, or I, Lethe, or I, Dr. Williams. This correct sense of our definition of who we are. It starts with, who am I as this I? And how does it fit together? And what am I talking about when I say this I in the first place? Jesus acknowledged a wonderful relationship with God. He called it a sonship relationship by referring to himself as the son of God, saying this is how I define the relationship. I am in this sense of oneness with the divine source that we call the infinite possibilities, this wonderful universe called God. We put all these wonderful words and attributes together, for they describe what Jesus was trying to say. I am in relationship. I am in sonship. I am the son of God. Well, you all call yourself a child of God. How important it is that we've also embraced the idea that you are sons of God. Now, that may be silly because you may say, wait a minute, I'm a woman, I'm female, I can't be a son. But the whole concept of sonship was something more beyond just the literal term of a designation of a firstborn boy. It was the essence of being the heir to all that is divine and all that is good. When you said you were in the sonship, or when you said I am a son of something, it meant that you were heir. Everything was yours. It was a gift to you. You were included in this divine relationship. So it was that Jesus said, I am declaring I'm the son of God. And that's what was so controversial. How dare you declare this? How dare you say that you are this kind of relationship with the divine? But this is Jesus defining the relationship for the world. And how important it is that we understand that. He said, of my own self, I can do nothing. Of me, the I that I am, I can do nothing. But yet we find within Scripture, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The I within us, we may look at as, as our humanness, where Jesus set aside that humanness 
to express his divinity, understanding of the divine within. And he invites us to do the very same. Defining the I not as himself, but the I as the way, the truth, the I, the, the light, the bread, the living water, all these things. These are not attributes of our physical body or our physical being. They were the attributes of the divine within us. Sounds a little complex, but I want to make sure that we understand this because it's so important in our spiritual growth that we have a definition of our relationship with God and who we are understanding that I that's within us. It is a divine I, for as we set aside the physical, the humanness of ourselves, and awaken to our true self, which is God dwelling within. The false sense is all about this physical life that we live. It's full of all kinds of limitations. It's full of all kinds of shortcomings. It's full of all kinds of challenges. Then Jesus said, it's not I, but it is the divine, the power, the presence, the infinite within me that does all this wonderful work. Illustrating it so clearly that when the disciples came to him and said, you talk a lot about this divine source. You talk a lot about the father within. You talk a lot about show us this father. And Jesus very clearly says, have you not understood that when you see me, you see the father? Because the I within me has been set aside. The human, the physical, has been set aside. And I embrace and I welcome and I speak of and I uh, uh, live out this divine I, which is the God within me. Understanding that, that when you see me, you see the Father. If you don't understand that, you don't understand that this is how we live and express God. We allow God to flow from the source within, to release, to touch, to be revealing light for the world around us. See, quite often we struggle with this, or we think about everything within our own power and our own abilities. So we find these great limitations because we think, well, I can't do this. You're right. In our humanness, we find shortcomings. But in the expression of the divine eye at work within us, there are all kinds of possibilities for us. We don't express God. We simply allow God to express God's self. Does that make sense to you? When we understand this, we're really grasping this powerful truth. We just set aside ourselves. We step aside and allow the divine to express itself. We set our humanness aside. We set all of our shortcomings and limitations aside. And we allow God just express yourself in me, through me, around me, and always for me. And in doing so, we find this beautiful revelation taking place within us. It's God at work within us, not us working at getting God to do something or trying to figure out how to express God. We just allow, and we allow God to be expressed as we step aside, as we do this. We are becoming, then, the sons of God. Sons, meaning firstborn, meaning heirs. That applies to anyone, male or female. But you are this, embracing this concept of understanding truly. You are the heir to everything that is there that is of the divine. It's so important that we understand this, for there's a shared responsibility in this work. We must open up our lives. We've got to do something. That's part of our life open ourselves in a willingness to this divine expression, and then set aside that I and allow the divine power of God to work within us. This is what we refer to as dying daily. Dying daily. Went up this morning. I hope you died today. That sounds crazy to say because we talk about new life and we talk about welcoming the day, but how important is that we begin by dying daily Releasing the self that gets in the way, that releasing that which is the ego, that which is the physical concepts of we, who we are. And we just say, oh, wow, I'm so limited because this is who I am in this body. An awakening that we are more than physical beings. We are spiritual beings. And so we die to this concept that the world wants to put upon us constantly, time and time again, a concept that says you are just this physical being. You are just this body. But we die 
daily, allowing the divine to be revealed. Jesus understood his own nothingness only to discover his everything and invites us the same. When we awaken in ourself as human beings, yes, we have our limitations. But he's calling us to awaken to this amazing understanding of our everythingness. Can we claim that word, everythingness? Or maybe we're creating a new one here. But I want to describe what it's all about. The everythingness that's within us. When we set aside the humanness and welcome and allow God to be expressing, wow, everythingness is ours. That means great health, strength, prosperity. That means the wonderful blessings of God are there for us. We begin to discover our everything that has always been afforded to us and always offered to us. In doing so, what we do is we understand that we are no longer just a physical being, but we are a spiritual being that is awakening to this wonderful oneness, this oneness with God. There's no separation. There's no division. There is just I setting aside, making room for the divine to just permeate everything, to speak through me, to shine through me. So it is that we find that this beautiful passage of let your light so shine. And what is that light? It's that inner being of the presence of God within you that we need to set aside the I so that it can shine, so it can radiate because it wants to do so naturally. God wants to just radiate. From, very, from the very essence from within. But we have sometimes created this little barrier of the ego, of the physical, of the self. It's a little troublemaker that appears. You know how it is when we've seen troublemakers in our world, in our life? We've seen troublemakers at work. People want to make our life difficult. Well, let me tell you, there is a great troublemaker. And the troublemaker for each and every one of us is this little I, I'm going to call it, versus the divine I. That troublemaker is our concept of us as a physical being, our limitations. It becomes a troublemaker in that it is constantly there saying, this is what you can, this is what you cannot do, this is how you are able, you are not able, this is what will be possible for you. It's that little I that always is creating the trouble for us. And could you imagine what it's like when we remove the little I and all that is there is the divine I? So we begin to understand this. For the very meaning of the word I is God. Now let's go back to the Old Testament. What do we understand there? As Moses asked, whom do I say is sending me to go to the Pharaoh? Whom do I say is sending me to be the liberator of the people of Israel? Who am I, what power and authority am I moving in? Go in the I am. I, the divine. I, meaning God, the God within you that is expressed in the I am-ness. So it's how you are expressing God. That is the light within you. But oh, our little troublemaker gets in the way and always wants to come over us and always darken that light and always get into the, the ego is there and Jesus dealt with it in numerous scenarios. For the disciples gathered together so many times as that little eye creeped into their conversation, we read in Matthew 18, 1. And at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom? Mark 9, 34. But they were silent, for on their way they'd been arguing about who was the greatest in the kingdom. Luke 9, 46. Then the argument stated among the disciples, which one of them is going to be the greatest? We could go on and on of stories of that little eye, that little troublemaker coming in and getting in the way, that ego is saying, who's going to be the greatest? Will it be you? Will it be me? Suddenly the focus is on the humanness, no longer on the divinity, the wonderful power and presence. The shift happens within our lives, and it creates this sort of uh, covering that keeps the light from radiating at its full intensity. The light of the divine, the light of God, radiating, being, being, being a beacon for the world. So it is that this distraction weakened all of their spiritual work. Let me tell you this. When you begin to have these discussions, who's the greatest? The focus is no longer on your purpose and your mission. 
it becomes on you. And suddenly you've diminished the energy of the divine work. And there's a lot of people who begin to embrace this kind of thinking in our world today. We begin to look and say, well, I could be great. Oh, I could take this. I could be a fabulous speaker. I could be a great motivational speaker. I could be a great teacher. I could be all these kind of things. It could be, it's all about me. And I could be someone really great. And then we realize we missed the whole purpose. It's not about the I, the little I, but it's about the great, wonderful message of the divine shining and radiating through us. Now, here's the wonderful thing. It's really great when we just realize there's a lot of things in this physical world I'd be afraid of or scared of or things I can't do because I see my limitations. But when I remove that kind of I, the little I of me, and I allow the divine to just do its work, there's unlimited possibility. It's a big shift in our life. We don't have to worry about anything because we're allowing God to work through us. So our fears are gone, our worries are gone, our cares are gone. All of this is removed from us as we begin to understand that the true meaning of I is God, and God is I working in me, and that I am is the divinity being expressed within me. So it's important, because so often we are like that illustration within scriptures of a light, of a candle. How many of you have a candle with maybe a hurricane glass on it, and the wick has gotten a little too long. And when you light that candle, it just smokes. And the inside of the hurricane glass is all clouded over and dark, and it doesn't radiate a very bright light, correct? Scripture's talking in the illustration about trimming the wick. How important it is that you trim the wick, because when the wick is trimmed, the light will burn beautifully and bright. When it's not trimmed, and it's just going everywhere and being out of uh, proportion, it creates a smoky cloudiness. It illustrates our own individual life. When we allow the eye not to be trimmed, that wick within our life, not to be uh, brought into a perspective of who and what we are and uh, uh, not trimmed in, or trimmed in a way that it really can burn brightly and will shine beautifully in the world. When we let go of I, me, ego, self, release it, die daily in this context. You see, a God within is going to show you the way, reveal all things. So simply we make decisions with this wonderful understanding that, God, you're going to reveal yourself in me. God, you're going to reveal yourself through me. God, you're going to reveal yourself around me, and for I know that you are always for me. So let us consider what would happen if and the only I involved in our life was God, what would happen? What would that be like? If we remove ego, if we remove self, if we remove the physical concept, and we just say, I am a divine being. Wow. I'm a divine being. God is flowing in me and through me. When I face health challenges, I could say very clearly, the divine is in me at work, and that healing wholeness that is intended, that God is, is, is made of, is mine. When I think about my own personal prosperity, I say, God is at work. God is blessing. I'm going to share with you that I can always say every job I've ever taken, I ask first, is this the place God wants me to be? If it is, God will always take care of me. God will always. And even to this day, you know, there are times when we've been in financial challenges, and I say, you know what? I don't need a paycheck today. God will take care of me. And always that's true. When I get the eye out of the way, the divine always reveals itself, taking care of us to the highest and the fullest and to the very best. I want to tell you this. Yes, I started in Minnesota. What was it, 14,000? I don't even remember. 14, I can remember her saying, we're going to try. And the word was try. Not even we're going to, but we're going to try to pay you. And I can remember that. Wow, okay, try. Now, I was in a marketing job, and I was getting a salary of $50,000 a year, and I was leaving that, and uh, I just knew that God was going to take care of all things. I never once went without. I never once suffered, did not have a meal or a place to stay or transportation. 
And when I left, I was so blessed. The church provided me with a Cadillac. They provided me, a, it was a, a leased car. I had a Cadillac. I had a great salary. I had all kinds of benefits and blessings that were there. Uh, just immense blessings through it all. I was so grateful that I didn't stop to say, look at Paul Gretz, the I and the humanness within me. But when we release and we let go and say, the divine is expressing, God is expressing, God is at work. All things work together for good, and we know that. So the I steps aside, and we allow the divine to manifest and to work in the miraculous way. So I want to share this with you, that it's important that we establish and define our relationship. What is your relationship with God? Do you understand? Is it all about you, or is it all about the divine? Have you understood this, and to make this kind of definition of a relationship that you're willing to say, I understand my life in this world is meant to live as the son of God. Ooh, that sounds blasphemous for many of us. We would never say that. But you know that scripture says that? Know ye not that you all are sons of God? That's scripture calling you this, calling you that, and inviting you to embrace this label that says, I'm an heir. I am the firstborn. I am the one who is a re the recipient of all the goodness of God. And it is there for me if I'll just step out of the way and allow the divine to unfold as it's intended to be. Now, today may not be the fifth grade, and you may not be receiving a note that says, I like you, do you like me? Circle yes or no. But it is a moment where we have to define this relationship. We have to decide who and what we are in relationship to God. And when we do, as long as I know that God is the only I, you know what? You are about the Father's business. That's right. People question and wonder, is this really what God intends me to do? Is this really what I should do for my life? A lot of people say, Pastor, would you pray with me? I want to know, is this the direction I should go as the, in my life? Help me make these career decisions. I can offer this advice. As long as you know that God is the only I, you are always about the Father's success, prosperity, blessing, goodness, wholeness. It's all yours as we allow the divine to be expressed. Define yourself today. You are the child of God. You are the son of God. You are the revelation of God. You are the essence of the divine for the divine is being revealed in you, through you, 